हाईलाइट चैनल ऑफ द रणवीर शो दिस इज टी आर एस क्लिप्स वाई वॉज अ होल मूवी मेड ऑन professor openheimer so he is an extremely pivotal figure he well fairly or unfairly he is uh, regarded as the father of the atomic bomb and he is regarded as the, as the father of atomic power and uh, atomic energy as well so he oversaw the manhattan project which was in an, essentially an emergency project that the americans cobbled together they brought together the world's best scientists the best theoretical physicists the best chemists the best engineers and also the american armed forces the military put all these people together and the mission was to assemble a nuclear reactor and create a nuclear bomb asap as soon as possible and the pressure was that the germans could do it before us and you don't want nukes in germans uh, germany's hands you don't want nukes in adolf hitler's hands there was a whole thing so uh they and, and by that time it was known that uranium undergoes fission you can use a neutron you can shoot a neutron at a uranium nucleus and it it will break up it will give off give off more neutrons and that is something that will start a chain reaction if you know how to engineer that so the question was how do you engineer atoms how do you get a neutron to to strike an uh, uh, atomic nucleus and then to engineer the rest of the chain reaction process so uh, so then what they did was yeah congo so congo there were three or four places at that time where you had uranium mines one was canada one was czechoslovakia one was congo and one was somewhere else maybe california or something so the americans persuaded the belgians who held congo at the time to reopen the uh, uranium mines over there and uh, they did that uh, they were obviously paid for it and several thousand tons of uranium ore were shipped to the us i think a thousand and a half tons or so were shipped to the us now this uranium ore is all dust and rocks and some uranium it has to be purified then when you purify uranium you get uranium 238 so when you get a brick or 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 let's say a kilogram of uranium metal out of it 99.3% of that is going to be uranium 238 and only 0.7% is going to be uranium 235 but the the isotope you want is 235 so that's really hard to procure so you got to invent means to purify the uranium and to extract the uranium 235 out of it so they had to devise new mass spectroscopy and various other ways uh, you know they, they would uh, make they would uh, create this uranium hexafluoride gas and then use certain techniques to to uh, you know take out the uranium 235 so that was a very long procedure a uh, lot of engineering prowess went into that but eventually they were able to start purifying uranium enrich uranium to uh, uranium 235 to about 90% uh, purity which is weapons grade uranium so all this was overseen by j robert oppenheimer who was a theoretical physicist not an experimentalist but uh, they the us army military i think they regarded him as a genius and he actually did the job so a whole bunch of the world's best physicists chemists all of them enrico fermi uh, richard feynman and, uh, and a whole host of other other scientists they all came together and by 1944 or 1945 they had enough uranium to put together uh, you know the first rudimentary nuclear bomb so they assembled one bomb in which you, the the fissile material was uranium and one bomb in which the fissile material was plutonium and the first test was done in in new mexico somewhere in 1945 i think it was in july it was a plutonium bomb and uh, it worked that's called the trinity test so that is the culmination of the manhattan project they had two more bombs uh, that they had uh, dev- they had constructed by that time one uranium one plutonium these were shipped off to japan and in august one was dropped on hiroshima and a few days later the next was dropped on nagasaki and they had more bombs in the pipeline but the they chose not to use those and by i think october or november that year the japanese surrendered so that is how the nuclear weapons technology was bo- was born and j robert oppenheimer was the father is is regarded as the father of this technology so during times of worldwide conflict do the scientists in these developed nations become an extended wing of the army yes if you cooped them into the into the military effort definitely because the only way to to overcome your enemy is to have better technology to just make the audiences understand this better the hypothetical indian scenario is that if india enters a war with anybody tomorrow there's going to be a call from the pmo to isro and they're going to tell isro listen stop whatever you're doing and start working on some 
technologies that will assist us in this war am i right in thinking this way oh uh, definitely yes so the call would go out not just not just to isro it would go out to barc it would go out to every other institute where you have high quality scientists and the objective would be to give us the technological edge whatever the chinese or whoever has we need something better than that we need the technological edge it's always technology that gives you the results in 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 war the side with the better technology wins because technology is a force multiplier speaking about technology whenever it was tech for world war 2 growing up we only heard about albert einstein not too many people had even heard about oppenheimer until this nolan movie uh what is albert einstein's role in like world war 2 then uh, einstein has essentially no role in that uh the theory the theoretical groundwork that that it did in developing the science of quantum mechanics that is what led to the eventual technology that was that was developed for the manhattan project so without the understanding of quantum mechanics that he gave us we would not have been able to eventually engineer use that to engineer a nuclear bomb and to engineer nuclear reactors okay yeah so that was his role he was a theoretician he was not an experimentalist he was not an engineer a pure theoretician okay now let's speak about oppenheimer so say he was recruited by the american government and they told him that listen we're at war you're one of the best scientists in the world you need to help us with the technological edge therefore we're giving you this project where you have to further the understanding of nuclear technology is that the likely narrative that was given by the american government to him or did they tell him listen at some point we're going to have to drop atom bombs on our enemies because they'll drop it on us first what was the narrative given to him the nar- narrative was that the germans have already achieved nuclear fission and they will definitely be working on a nuclear bomb project so we need the bomb before them that was the narrative so get together the best scientists that you know of put assemble together in a, assemble them together in a team we're going to give you the assistance of the us army the military they will give you whatever you need you get together with with german uh, with with general whoever he is i forget the name of the guy and you assemble a team a crack team together you will get whatever funds you want get this done there was the uh, brief given to him okay i believe the movie is about a court case that happens post world war 2 right am i right so uh what was the court case then so oppenheimer was a very interesting person he uh, had a certain political uh, ideology ideologically he was left leaning he had associations with the communist party of the united states and i believe his wife was a member of the communist party maybe he even his brother uh so that was a deal but he was a patriot and he worked for the us and he developed this entire uh, project he made it happen uh but uh, you see when you were when all the scientists who were working all the physicists engineers etc who were working on the manhattan project they were all spied upon by the fbi and because you know there was always the possibility of somebody leaking information to the enemy and that actually happened eventually a few names came out uh, there was a german born physicist who was passing on uh, manhattan project uh, information to the soviets damn so, yeah and that came out later on so at that time they did not realize it so there was this intense surveillance on each and every person there was a f- proper file and dossier created for every person all their whereabouts were known they would be tailed they would be surveilled there was no privacy whether they knew it or not that sort of thing okay so after everything was done after the one world war 2 uh, there was this uh, this intense period of uh, what they call mccarthyism in the us in which uh, communism was declared to be an un-american ideology an enemy ideology because it was the ussr's ideology and the us government went after anybody who was suspected to uh, of having any sympathy for communism and uh, this guy oppenheimer was like he had a very clear communist leanings his family members were involved in this so they revoked his security clearances they kind of uh, disgraced him uh, there was a witch hunt against him and uh, it was a kind of humiliation for him and he faced a lot of hardships he had to come and testify against uh, in front of various committees and prove his innocence and even though he was never found guilty of any kind of wrongdoing but he was tarnished because of his communist association and i believe there must have been court cases and all that against him so like he was demonized and there was this terrible witch hunt against him and uh, he became very bitter and un- unhappy naturally because of that so he was going through hell in america post world war 2 oh definitely he was going through hell because all of his uh, 
I believe m- many of his colleagues must have distanced themselves from him, cancelled him, so to say, <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. He was essentially was cancelled, you know, mm. very publicly. Mm. It was a humiliation and all that. So yeah, it was a very bad time for him. It obviously, if you see his uh, interviews in later times when he is a much older person, you can see the bitterness and the sadness in his face, you know. Uh, that sort of thing. So yeah, he, they treated treated him very badly. A, a genuine American hero, and he was not a guy who wanted to kill people with nuclear bombs. He was doing it because he was ordered to do it, and he always had a lot of regret for what happened. I mean, the number of people that were killed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was very very. Uh, he felt a lot of guilt for that. You know, he, he was one could say a Hindu possibly because you know he was a Sanskrit scholar. He had translated the Bhagavad Gita from Sanskrit to English himself from the original Sanskrit. And he would quote uh, passages from the Bhagavad Gita and all that. So, yeah. So, when it came to building the atomic bomb and, you know, unleashing this terrible power, he reminded himself of what Lord Krishna told Arjun. that Just do your duty. Don't worry about the consequences. You know, that sort of thing. I would also urge my editing team to play that voice clip of his which has now become famous. Yeah. Here we go. We knew the world would not be the same. Two people laughed. Few people cried, most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty. And to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. What made him say that I have become death, the destroyer of worlds? Uh, there are so many remarkable passages in the Bhagavad Gita, but I think uh, this one came to him immediately when he saw the the incredible brilliance and the shattering, blinding brightness of of the nucle- of the first uh, nuclear explosion, the Trinity explosion, which shone brighter than the sun. It, uh, the nuclear test took place, uh, I think, around five twenty or five thirty in the morning, uh, in the pre-dawn time, before the sun rises. and this nuclear flash it it shone brighter than the sun can ever shine it illuminated all the hills around the place like you would never imagine it and for some reason that verse came to his mind and that's why he is so closely associated with that particular passage of the bhagavad gita it's also from a human empathy perspective this human being has given a significant portion of his prior decades to furthering nuclear technology maybe someone is hard he knew not someone is hard he obviously knew that this is going to turn into a bomb at that point but maybe he was so into his work and furthering his understanding of science due to his love for science he just kept going forward and then somewhere along the lines he realized oh man i've given so much of my time to something that has actually caused this much suffering in the world right definitely the guilt was there but it also advanced see obviously the atomic bomb was it is a terrible thing it ended world war 2 but it set off the cold war mm. and it set off the situation that we have today where so many nuclear weapons are pointed at various nations so that's something that uh, is something that his work triggered off right but it also led to lots of advances in nuclear technology nuclear medicine which is used to diagnose and cure cancer it gave us nuclear power which is actually a very clean form of power so all of this was done all of these all of these advances in technology and science happened because of him technology is always a double edged sword you can use it for good or for bad it's up to the person who wields the technology right so as a scientist he did his duty his country called upon him they said you, we need you to do this he did his duty and he, he produced the, the goods but then o- over time he saw how it was used and that left a lot of bitterness in him so these are playlists made especially for you we've tailor made learning experiences for you the rs clips